Today we are making an incredibly delicious, super, super soft red velvet cake alongside the best frosting ever, a super easy cream cheese buttercream. So to start off, you wanna preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius fan forced and grease or line two eight inch cake tins. I'm using my homemade cake release to grease mine. It just saves so much time. Okay, now once these are greased and ready to go, you just wanna set them aside and now we're going to work on our cake layers. So you wanna start off by sifting together your dry ingredients. So I've got two and a quarter cups of all purpose flour, three tablespoons of corn flour, also known as cornstarch in some places, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. And then using a whisk, I'm just mixing that all together until it's well combined. You can also use cake flour in replacement of the all-purpose flour and cornstarch. Now set this aside for later, and in another bowl, you're going to add in six tablespoons or 86 grams of unsalted butter, three quarters of a cup of unflavored vegetable oil, and one and three quarters of a cup of white granulated sugar. And then using a hand or stand mixer, you just wanna cream this together until it's light and creamy. If you're using a stand mixer, then you wanna use the paddle attachment on medium high speed. Okay, so this is what your mixture should look like. It's super light and creamy now, and it takes about kind of two to three minutes to get to this stage. Next, you're going to crack in three eggs one by one, mixing well in between each addition. So you wanna make sure each egg is well incorporated before you add in the next egg, roughly about kind of 10 to 15 seconds between eggs. Okay, now just give your bowl a little scrape down just to make sure everything's incorporated well. And then next I'm going to add in one tablespoon of vanilla, one and a half teaspoons of white vinegar, and about three to three and a half tablespoons of red liquid food coloring, depending on how you know, deep you want the red color to be. And then just mix that all together until it's well combined. Now the last step is to fold in our pre-sifted dry ingredients with our buttermilk. Now to do this, I'm going to first add in half of my dry ingredients and then gently fold it into my batter with a spatula until it's almost combined. It's okay if you have kind of a few little bits of, you know, unmixed flour. Now once that's done, add in your buttermilk and fold that through until just combined, followed by the remaining dry ingredients and again folding through until just combined. By folding in the flour, it's going to prevent us from overmixing the batter and developing too much gluten, which we don't want. We want a really nice soft cake. Okay, that's it looks good. So this is what your batter should look like. And now it's done. So all we need to do is distribute it evenly into our two eight inch cake tins. You can totally weigh your cake tins if you want, but I always just estimate it. And then I'm just smoothing out the tops. And then just finish off by giving your cake tins a little bang. This is just going to help remove any large air bubbles which may be in the middle. Now these are going to go into the oven for 30 minutes or until a toothpick comes out clean. So my cake layers are done now and they look and smell amazing. So I've let them cool in the cake tins for about 20 minutes or so. And now I'm just running a knife around the edges to help release them. And I'm just turning them out onto a wire rack to completely cool. Oh my god, these cake layers are like so, so soft. Like, just look at that. Now, while these are cooling, let's go ahead and make the most incredible cream cheese frosting. It is so easy to make, so all you have to do is add one cup or 225 grams of room temperature unsalted butter to a bowl, and using a hand mixer or your stand mixer, whip it until it's light and creamy. So this should take about three to four minutes. If you're using your stand mixer, then you want to use the paddle attachment on a medium-high speed. Okay, now once your butter is much lighter in color like that, then the next thing that you wanna do is add in four and a half cups of icing sugar in three batches. So add in about a third first and on a low speed mix until it's combined, then add in your next third, mix until it's combined, and then add in the rest and mix until combined. And you wanna scrape down your bowl every now and then as you're doing this, just to make sure everything's mixing well. Okay, now to finish off, you wanna add in about one and a half cups, so that's 335 grams of cold cream cheese. Now you wanna make sure that your cream cheese is the firm type, not the spreadable type, and make sure it's cold, because this is going to help make sure that our cream cheese frosting isn't too soft. And then you also wanna add in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla and one and a half tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And then just mix that together on a medium high speed for a few minutes until everything is well combined and your frosting is super smooth and creamy. 
And that is it. You should end up with a beautifully smooth, not too soft cream cheese buttercream. So my cake layers are nice and cool now, so we're ready to assemble this cake. Now, because I left mine cooling upside down, the tops are nice and flat, so I don't need to do any kind of extra trimming. So I'm just going ahead and placing my first cake layer directly onto my cake stand. And then I'm just going to add a generous amount of cream cheese frosting on my first cake layer. And I'm just using my offset spatula to help me smooth it out. And as I'm smoothing it out, I'm just using my cake stand as kind of like a makeshift turntable. And I'm just turning it as I'm smoothing out the frosting with my offset spatula. Then my next cake layer is going on top of this cake layer. And I'm just making sure that the bottom of my cake layer is the top of my kind of layer cake so that the top is really nice and flat and then more frosting on top. And I'm just smoothing that out with my offset spatula. And then I'm also just using the excess frosting on the sides to cover the entire cake. I'm only putting a thin layer of frosting on because I'm going to pipe some rosettes all around this cake. Now I do have some crumbs in my frosting there, but I'm not worrying about a crumb coat and all of that because of the rosettes that I'm going to pipe on the top. Now I'm just smoothing out the sides with my cake scraper. And then I'm just cleaning up the top with my offset spatula by just bringing the top lip of frosting into the middle of the cake. Now I'm just giving the cake stand a little clean before I do my piping. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Now let's fill our piping bag. So for my rosette today, I'm using a 1M star tip and I'm just placing that into my piping bag, which I have pre-cut a little hole into. And then I'm just turning it out onto my hand and then just filling it with my cream cheese frosting. Now to pipe my rosettes, I'm just following the shape of a small E. Now I did need an extra half a batch of cream cheese frosting for this design because of how much piping there is, but if you're not planning to do this much piping, then the one batch will be more than enough. Okay, and there it is. My beautiful cream cheese rosette red velvet cake is all done. This cake has the most lush crumb to it. It is so super soft and the cream cheese frosting is literally the icing on the cake. It goes incredibly well with this cake. Mmm, so, so good. The cake is so, so soft. It literally melts in your mouth. If you try out this cake, then don't forget to leave a review on my blog. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next video.